right, so the first thing I'd like to talk about with the bow drill is in the letter that I gave everybody, I just have it as bow drill class. It really needs to be called basic bow drill class. And the reason I'm saying basic bow drill class is the fact that, number one, this is a really nice set, okay? I really took my time, made it perfect. Um, I'm using a deer antler for a bearing block, which provides frictionless, you know, downward pressure. And the fact that I'm using paracord as my string. My personal opinion, if this was going to be a true bow drill class, <laughs> if this was going to be a true bow drill class, you're talking natural cordage, you know, I mean, you could still be using the deer antler because, well, obviously it's natural. But more than likely, you're going to be using a rock, which can be an abrasive on your spindle, or you're going to be using wood, which is going to provide a lot of heat up on your bearing side, unless you've got a really steep, severe point like this. But it will eventually, obviously, burn down. Now, in my personal opinion, I truly believe that the bearing block is the most important part of the set, other than good quality wood that you know will hold, take and hold an ember. The reason I am a strong believer in a good quality bearing block is because that is what's going to provide you with that frictionless downward pressure. Because when you start doing these bow drills, and you start using wood as bearing blocks, you will really find out exactly what I'm talking about. You'll have a lot of drag, where with something like this, it really helps. Now I'm gonna pass this set around. This is how I make my sets. And something else that everybody needs to understand is there are so many different opinions and ways of performing a bow drill, it's not even funny. And as you learn it, you yourself will still, years later, see different methods, different techniques, and you will alter and change your way of doing it. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But at this point, this is how I make a bow drill set. The components that these are made out of is cottonwood. In my area, in my opinion, cottonwood is superior when it comes to making bow drills because it's a very forgiving wood. Some areas, like this area, I haven't seen a single cottonwood since we've been here. So if I had to go out and try to make a bow drill set, I don't really know what trees in this area are going to work really well other than the cedar tree. The problem with the cedar tree is if you get into the red resin, and if you don't apply enough downward pressure, you're not really gonna get anywhere. It's just going to basically caramelize, I guess, and then better, I don't really know the proper name. Anybody know what that's called? Well, it's gonna polish. There you yeah, go, there polish. you go. Yeah, I mean, and then you're just gonna get a lot of squeaking and not a whole lot of dust. A lot of heat, but very little dust. So if you can provide down, a lot of downward pressure, then cedar is, pretty, uh, is a pretty good wood. So the components that I've got here is a hearth board. I've got my bearing block, or it could be called a handhold. You've got your spindle. You've got your bow, and obviously your string. And then you're going to want something to catch your ember on. And if it's wet or damp, have something to set everything on to keep it off the moisture of the ground. Even when it's dry, I still like to set my, my sets on something. It's one of those mental things, you know? Even when it's bone dry, I still like to keep the tip of my spindle on something that's bone dry as well. Again, it's probably mostly mental, but it's just one of those things. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to pass these two components as well as this around and show everybody how I do this. You'll notice that on the end of your spindle that goes in your hearth board, you see how it's blunt, real round? I want a lot of friction on this end. On my bearing block side, I don't want a lot of friction. 
so you can see that I've got it nice and steep and pointed. On my hearth board, I've already burnt this in, I've already put a notch in it, and I've already fluted it out on the bottom. I wanted to do this so that way I could pass it around, everybody could look at it and see how I do it, and then you can either emulate it or try it your own way, and we can try to make it work for you. There are multiple people here that are very efficient in a bow drill set. So anybody that wants to try this is more than welcome. I've got plenty of material that I gathered up to make several sets. And there, like I said, there are multiple people here. Travis is very good at it. Larry's very good at it. John's very good at it. And Jonathan's good at it as well. So there's plenty of people here that can help everybody. Now your spindle, the, the length of your spindle is going to change based on personal preference. I like my spindles roughly where the crease of my wrist is around the palm area. The reason I like it like that, it may be just a tad bit long, but like I said, over time, this is going to shrink especially if you're using a wooden bearing block or a rock bearing block because you're going to eat this thing on both ends at that point. Your bow itself, I like to be able to hold out my arm and be able to grab it and just have it ride right underneath my armpit. You don't want something that's overly large, long I mean, or big around because then it becomes heavy. You're going to put more fatigue on yourself than absolutely necessary. Something small is going to, you're going to be able to bow a heck of a lot longer. And in fact, John made Travis, Travis, you want to show everybody that thing? John made this for Travis. And this is pretty interesting because it's very lightweight. And it looks like he's got it set up to where you can really adjust the tension on this string really easy. You could bow with this lightweight thing all day long. Now the reason I don't want something overly large or long, well number one, same thing, it's gonna weigh you down. But when you bow forward, your, your bow is gonna to wanna to go in the dirt a lot. You have a hard time keeping these things out of the dirt anyway, especially when you're getting tired. So the last thing you wanna do is make it more work on yourself by making this thing overly large. Now you'll also see that I have this fork here, and that's simply because I put a loop on one end, put it over there, and then I don't got to do anything fancy on that end. And now, here's another thing, is there's multiple ways to tighten a bow drill string. I've seen people get extremely fancy with this. I am not one of those people. I do not get overly fancy with my bow drill string. The reason I don't is because I have to adjust it. As you use it, it's going to stretch and give and get loose. So I like to be able to take one end loose fast so that I can restring it. I take my time with my bow drills. I do not rush them. When you rush a bow drill, that's when you get tired, that's when you get frustrated, and that's when you fail. But if you take your time and pay attention to every single aspect and address it, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about, you'll up your chances significantly. So as how I string my bow, as you can see I've got a notch here on the back side. The reason I have that is because I'm going to pull this taunt, not overly tight, but taunt. I'm going to pinch it in my thumb and then I'm just going to wrap it over itself to hold it in place. Now that notch is going to keep that string from wanting to slide forward and make this loose faster. It's still going to loosen up. That's just, that's just the nature of it. But I'm just going to wrap this around just like I'm lashing a knife handle or something. And then as what I do is I just literally put a single half hitch in it. Just one half hitch, just like this. And that's how I do it. So now when I have to adjust it, I just pull this loose and it comes right out really easy and I can adjust it. So 
So let me just wrap this up and I'll pass this around as well. And the spindle. Where'd the hearth board run off to? Now something on the hearth board, I don't know if everybody noticed, is on the underside, did you guys see how I fluted that out? This was a tip that I never learned until I located YouTube. About 12 years ago, I thought I knew how to do a bow drill. I was really wrong. <laughs> I was able to get it every once in a while, but it was subtle tips like this that I learned when I found communities like Wolf Customs and other bushcraft communities. Other things that you'll notice about this is I really took my time and I cleaned it out smooth. If you get into a hurry and you leave little hairs and grains in here, as your dust falls into your notch, it will want to collect on those hairs and can cause you problems as well. Does anybody have any questions before we go on? Or anybody have anything they want to add? So, so the notch is to collect the dust. Correct. Correct. I was, was going to say, like, where I am in Texas, our humidity uh, plays a huge role. Oh, humidity is a huge and, factor. And uh, sometimes it seems like there's so much moisture in the air that I won't flute out the bottom as much as what I would on a really dry day. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want the wet air to get under there as much. Is what I would on a day that's not as, that's not as wet. I can know? see I can see that, um, and I I guess I actually failed to tell everybody the reason why I fluted that is that does allow that air to get underneath there and provide some oxygen to feed that 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 coal that you're trying to build. But I can definitely see what Jonathan is talking about, and that's something that I've never taken into consideration. So I'm going to have to try that on a nice humid day. You know what I mean? Anybody else? <laughs> Anybody else have any questions so far? How do you determine how wide your notch is going to be and how far into the socket you're going to go? I basically judge that based on my spindle yeah. and, the, and the spindle size. Where'd my spindle run off to? You'll notice that this spindle is relatively large in diameter. I personally kind of like a larger spindle like this. <laughs> because the larger the spindle, the larger the coal that you get. Now, when you're using frictionless bearing blocks, a big spindle like this is easy to control. Sometimes a big spindle like this, when you're using rocks or other woods, sometimes a bigger spindle can give you a little bit more of a hassle. But how I, how I locate my notches is I literally just put this on my board and I eyeball it. I can look at it and I can see. I don't want it too far over to where when I drill in, my spindle's gonna wanna come out the side and I don't want it too far back that I have to notch it all the way in. So you don't actually burn it in a little bit before you I cut do the burn notch? it in first and we'll go over that. But like I said, I went ahead and burnt this one in first and then made that notch so everybody could see it. The guide that I use is I take my spindle. Come on up here. I was gonna say, I could show you a guide I used. <laughs> Come on up here. <laughs> he might be doing the same one. In order to determine where this socket is gonna be placed, what I'll do is I'll take my, and Justin's is right on. I take my spindle and I line it up to the edge of the board and where the spindle ends is gonna be the center of my, my that's, socket. That's what I do. Huh. Yeah. Okay. And that was that was your method too. Yep. Yeah. Now, the one thing that everybody needs to understand with a bow drill is bow drill is definitely never, never a hundred percent. And you're going to fail at a bow drill far more than what you're going to actually achieve one. Yeah. And it may take you a year or it two may. before you yeah. get your first pull. It took me it a may. Year before I got my first pull. It may. And then something clicks. 
and that's exactly it. Everything, yeah. once everything falls into place, you find Don't that sweet spot. Yeah. Yeah. You find that flow. Then you're able to actually work outside of that sweet spot, and you can still work with it. You can work with less optimal materials and everything else. Start trying all kinds of different This woods. particular set, I, I harvested this wood over a month ago, and it's been in my house drying ever since. Am I still going to get an ember or a coal with this? I have no idea. I hope. I mean, it is a it is a bow drill class, so I hope I'm successful. <laughs> Will I be? I don't know. We're gonna find out now. Now the loading and setting all this up that can be kind of a trick. First of all, I got to figure out how I want to set my haversack to where it's going to not get in my way while I'm bowing. So I'm going to have to kind of turn and play with this for a second. I like to place my foot as close to this notch as possible without getting in the way of myself, if that makes any sense at all. So I'm going to put my foot on here relatively close. A lot of people like to do this barefoot, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I've done it barefoot a lot. And I kind of like it myself, except for you give yourself smoker's toe. I love it. Yeah, I mean, you, you got that big yellow stain on there, looks like a bruise and everything else. When you first go to load this thing, it could be a trick because it's tight. Now, some people load their spindle to where it's on the inside, like this. I personally don't like doing that. I personally like having my spindle on the outside. And the reason I don't like it on the inside is because I don't want this spindle rubbing up against this. That's just me. Or hitting your fingers. Or hitting my or fingers. Or jamming when it gets to the end. Exactly. <laughs> but there's a lot of people that they don't, it doesn't affect them bowing at all. And that's fine. You know, there's, it, there's, there's a lot of right ways with the bow drill. And a hell of a lot of wrong ways to do a bow drill. <laughs> <laughs> Only time is going to teach you those wrong ways and those right ways. So when I load this, I'm going to start from the outside just like this. And this is some, this paracord has been used a few times, so hopefully it holds up. But I'm going to load it just like this. And I'm going to swing it out, smack somebody in the head with it is what I'm going to do. Stretch it out a little bit, it's a little too tight. I like my string tight. Some people like their string loose. Again, it's kind of one of those things where it's your, you just gotta learn what's gonna work for you. So I'm gonna put my foot, like I said, as close to that notch as possible without truly getting in my way. Before I try to achieve a coal with this thing, if I want a fire, obviously you're going to have to have your materials together well before you do this because it would be ridiculous to do all this work, get a, get a nice big juicy coal, and then realize, oh man, I ain't got my tinder bundle, I ain't got my, my kindling, I ain't got nothing. Inside my haversack is my tinder bundle. I've got it in there. Now, obviously, I'm not worried about making a sustainable fire because we've got one right over there. This is a catch. I'm going to put this underneath my notch. That's where I'm going to catch my coal if I achieve one. Or where I'm going to collect dust while I bow. Now's the time to adjust yourself. Get comfortable. There's something underneath your knee. Get it out of the way. If you want to put a pad underneath your knee, put a pad underneath there. Get comfortable. You're going to want to try to brace, really brace your wrist up against your chin. You don't want this thing out here because if it's out here and you're bowing, it's going to be swinging. You want to really try to stabilize everything as best as you can. 
even though sometimes that's still hard even when you brace yourself. Now, when I first start this, like I said, I'm going to get comfortable. I got my wrist locked into place. You can see that I'm kind of upright in a comfortable position. When I start bowing, I'm going to bow, I'm going to bow slow and steady, and I'm going to use the full length of my bow. Now I'm just going to go slow and steady because at this point, all I'm trying to do is build up a nice base of dust. Now. I'm noticing right off the bat I'm having to apply a lot of downward pressure here. I shouldn't have to be doing that. Now a trick to remedy that is something that I think I learned from Larry is basically taking a little bit of sand and putting it in the notch and it becomes an abrasive and it will kind of act as a sandpaper as you're bowing and really help. Why, why were you having to apply downward pressure? Well. because you were polishing the socket? Possibly, possibly. Or my wood might be just a little hard. But I mean, how did you know that you needed to, uh, it comes natural It's all for you. with feel. I know it's it comes all natural for you, but what, what was going on? The sound, was it because it was squeaking? Yeah. It was the it way was it soaking? felt. It was okay. the way it felt See, to I, me. I listened. It, it, when, you're, when you're getting a good dust, it, you hear a grind, a, a, a grinding sound. I was, it was basically feeling very smooth. Now we can get past that, even without the sand. It's just gonna take a little bit more. Now you hear the sound change? You hear that grinding noise? Now, when you start to see smoke, don't get excited because where there's smoke, there's not always fire. I don't care what they say. You're gonna take your time. And we're gonna let this build up. We're gonna let all that dust feel our socket. And I can see it back here. Now here's the other thing. If you get tired, take a break. Just stop, take a break. All you're trying to achieve is to fill your socket at this point. Now, if you feel energetic, keep going. A lot of people, once they get that socket filled, they'll really get to going. You don't have to do that. Some people go slow and steady the entire time. Sometimes that works, sometimes it don't. I seen Travis perform one of these one time and it looked effortlessly. He went this, he went this speed pretty much the entire time. Hear that squeaking? Does anyone know what's causing that? Pressure. Pressure and? And? Moisture? No. Insufficient friction. It's, it's chatter oh, it's black. He... It's hard. That right there. Now, if everybody wants to come over here, they can take a look at this notch. My dust has started to fill this. See how it's dropped down in there? Once I get this full, now is the time I want to create a lot of heat. But now that I've stopped, like I told you guys in the very beginning, I take my time with bow drill. So as what I'm going to do now is do I have to adjust my string? Maybe, maybe not. I'm going to because why wouldn't I? I'm also going to remove this black off my spindle. Now, when you take this black off, use good knife control because you can slip off, come over the top and cut your knuckle. I've done it. <laughs> I use my core because I can get better control. If 
I was using a wooden bearing block at this point, that point would have been drastically in, removed, and I'd have to reshape that. But since I'm using something that's virtually frictionless, it's not necessarily a problem. Like I said, now I'm going to take the time, undo this, restring it. Because now I don't got to build dust. Now I've just got to provide heat. And by taking your time, you allow yourself to also rest. There are some people that can sit here and do this for days and days and days and days and just they don't seem to get tired. I'm not one of those guys. Something you notice too is look look where his, his line's staying. See how it's staying close to his foot and in one spot? That really helps. Like your line will move up and down if you're not having a slow and like a you know a steady motion like this. If your bow's bouncing up and down, your line's gonna go up and down that spindle and you don't have all that force and pressure right down there next to the bearing block. Did you notice I held my hearth board down when I took my foot off? Especially if you're barefoot you want to do that because your sweat is going to stick you go pull it off there goes all your work now wasn't that simple wasn't that simple the first try are you kidding me what did I say in the beginning this has been sitting in my house for a month I wanted you guys to have good material that's going to work relatively easy, right? Look at the size of this. Come on up here. Look at the size of this. That's a big coal. That's why I like a big spindle. Yep, you get exactly. a big coal. Yes. You get a lot of dust. It you, and I, you don't got to panic right now. Take your time. This thing's going to sit here and smolder for a long time. <laughs> that coal's massive. I'm going to take that dust and drop right into my bird's nest. Yep. So now I'm going to reach into my haversack and I'm going to pull out just a little bit. I don't want a sustainable fire, so I'm not going to use a big giant bird's nest. We're just going to use something small. While that's building into a coal, I'm going to process this up a little bit more. I worked hard for that dust. I want it. So I'm going to take this dust right here and I'm going to put it right down in that, that bird's nest. This is the scary part. You don't know how many times I have lost a coal because of wind or I transferred it over and it splattered. It happens. It's going to happen. If it does happen, don't get upset. It, it, it's going to happen. So is what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put it right over the top, but not smash it. Flip that over just like that. Look, so I got, I still got, I got two coals. <laughs> Out of control. <laughs> <For camera purpose. laughs> Again, take your time. I'm going to cup this around it, and remember, heat rises. Okay. I'm just going to nurse it for a second. You don't got to get in a rush. Yeah, 
Isn't friction fire easy? No, it's not. <laughs> I do like making it look easy, though. <laughs> Feeds my ego a little bit, even though I say not to let that get out of control. Okay, anybody have any questions at all? Anybody have anything they want to add? Nothing? Nobody? I was just going to well say... Oh, go ahead. I, I was just going to say what what hurt me so bad when I was trying and trying and trying, like almost a year straight, was I, I didn't understand the importance of once you get comfortable, your, your spindle's, you know, there and you're comfortable, how important it is to just keep this locked at when one... This is one piece now. Like, I had way too much movement here, and to just lock this right underneath your knee, and to keep this locked, and just have that constantly going through your head, I can't let this move, I can't let this move. Because every time you do, you're letting air in, that's keeping that friction from, from heating up there. And that was a big thing for me. Like, that, that took me forever to just keep that memorized, to just, Keep this steady. Don't let this go anywhere. Yeah. And and that changed everything for me because I, I until someone saw me doing it and then pointed out, look how much movement you have up top. Uh, you know, I didn't know. No one. You can only learn so much when you see a video. You know. And somebody pointed it out, and I said, you know what? I'll I'll try it. And that's whenever it clicked, and I was able to you know to start to start getting a lot better at it. So this can be a hard skill to learn just it's, based on videos. It's horrible. You can hard. do it. You can do it. Obviously, you can do it, but to have hands-on experience is the best. And another reason I'm going to call this a basic bow drill class is some of you guys know that Larry and I went out. What 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 day was that? Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday. Yep, Thursday yep. We went out Thursday for our clothe and confident video. To so we set out to do that using pieces of flint and chert and a boot lace. We were out there for what, six and a half hours? Sounds about right. Now I'm not going to tell you if we were successful or not. You just got to watch the video.